Welcome to Easy Eats. My name is Chef Eve Deshane, and today we're in the Greener Villages Learning Kitchen with uh, Linda Hartley Orchard, a travel agent for TPI. Welcome, Linda, and thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Tell us a little bit about what a travel agent does other than just book you a trip somewhere. Okay, so basically I've been doing this for 15 years. Okay. And there's a lot more to it than that. There's the planning and the researching and the making suggestions based on what you want to do. So it's a lot more than just, here's a trip, let me book it for you. So we, we do all of the, all the parts. And then also the helping in destination or while you're in your trip, if there's any interruptions or that, you can call me and I'll be the one waiting on hold instead of you. What's the, uh, the difference between me going on to say Expedia or one of those sites online and booking my own trip? What's the advantage of using you instead of doing it all by myself? So again, it would be my experience, my knowledge, my, like sometimes if you go online and you look, you might be looking something up, um, think it looks great. And then I could tell you, you know, maybe that's something I never sell because it has really bad feedback from personal experience. How did you get into becoming a travel agent? Did you go to school for this? Well, I had never traveled. I did this right out of high school, went to college. It just sounded interesting because I wanted to travel and okay. the school included a trip. And then, uh, so I went to college for it in Moncton and then that was a year program and then I decided to go to university for a little bit and then I got into it a couple of years after that I decided I got a job at Sears Travel okay. back 2008 and then it just went from there started part-time and eventually got full-time and yeah you're an independent what made you choose to become an independent instead of say working for well I know that Sears is now defunct yes. but then you move to another travel agency but what made you decide to uh, branch out on your own realistically I have four kids it's hard to be out of the home all the time anyway so I decided I'll give it a try from home and yeah it's going really well so I'm in my this is going into my third year doing it but the first year was basically just just starting out, I really didn't have a lot going on that first year, but this second year and this year is going really well. Building up my clientele again and people want to travel, so it's been really Well, good. I was going to say that uh, with, uh, with COVID and all that stuff, how, does, how has it affected travel now compared to uh, pre-pandemic? For me, in a way, I was lucky because I was on mat leave, so I did not have to struggle like some of my colleagues did with with COVID when that yeah. happened and all the horribleness that came with it. Um, so when I got back though, there's still been hiccups. Prices are higher. I you know there's flights being canceled, this sort of thing, but things are smoothing out now. Things are getting better. There was just such a high demand to get back into travel that some of the tour operators couldn't keep up. So there was a lot of hiccups, but things are, Things are a lot smoother now and people are traveling freely and it's been really good, yeah. Do you just book vacations or do you uh, book any kind of trip? Say I, I need to go visit family mm -hmm. in Vancouver. Is that something that you can do for me too? It is. Um, now that I work from home, I do have the luxury of picking what I wanna book. So okay. if, if somebody reaches out to me and it's not something I feel comfortable with or something I really have uh, expertise in, I might say, you know, I'm. I'm sorry, I, I'll refer them to someone else. Um, but yes, I can do, you know, a hotel only, air only, that sort of thing. But my main focus is usually on package trips, like an all-inclusive, a cruise vacation, a guided European tour. Um, but I also can piece those together as well um, with the help of suppliers that are expert in those destinations. Right on. Is there any kind of attribute that you think someone who's looking to get into what you're doing um, do you have to be a people person? Do you really need to? I mean, now that you're doing it from home, mm -hmm. you really don't have people coming into the office, I guess. Right. So. Yeah. So when I did work in the office, yes, um, you have to be able to deal with people. You have to be able to answer questions on the spot. Um, now that I don't, I deal mostly in email and on the phone, but most of my clients are clients I've had for years. Um, I'm getting lots of new referrals, so that's great. But yeah, I would say you have to have a lot of patience um and a lot of love for the industry because it's not something that you just get into and you're going to make a million dollars like it's just yeah. it's not so you need to be you need to love the travel part of it and you need to have patience because a lot of our job is waiting on hold and yeah. waiting for answers from suppliers so that's something that we take on that burden so that you don't have to that's part of the 
reason why someone would come to a travel agent. So they don't have to worry about that. Hey, Linda, we want this. What do you got? And then I'm going to do all that for you. Right on. Um, I guess, are you expected as a travel agent to travel or is that something that you do in order to make yourself uh, give yourself more of an experience and a better rounded travel agent? Yeah, so definitely not expected, but it helps. I think if you went to a travel agent who had never been to any of the places that they were trying to sell, yep. it might make you think, I don't know what makes you that. Even if you have the training and the schooling and that sort of thing, it definitely helps to have done it. That hands-on experience. Exactly, yeah. yes. Um, do you get perks through the travel agency to allow you to do something like that or is that all on your own dime? So we do get some perks, uh, just small discounts. It's nothing really huge, maybe some points rewards in the industry that, that we can use for our own hotel stays or what's called a fam trip. So it's a familiarization trip. If you're working in an office, sometimes your office would pay for it, but if you're independent, you would pay for it yourself. And that is a really discounted trip where you're going to immerse yourself in a certain tour or all-inclusive vacation or cruise, and it's gonna be work. So you go, and yes, it's a, a vacation, but it is work. I've been on a few fams, and you are every day, eight to five, walking around, touring, different hotels, different things. So you can do something like that, and it's really good to keep your knowledge up and keep updated. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, what was one of your favorite trips? Um, I would say my favorite trip was Ireland because I've only been to Europe once. Okay. And I got to experience that with my sister and my mom. Uh, so, and it was beautiful. So it was a, a one week guided Trafalgar tour and uh, it, was, it was really great. And, I enjoyed that a lot. So right on. Um, I guess what would be one of the most popular ones that you've been booking? Like, what is the like the main stay? Is it everyone going to the Dominican or Cuba? Um, out of Fredericton, so we have direct flights to Cayo Coco, Cayo Santa Maria, Cuba. Well, this year we only had Cayo uh, Santa Maria, um, and we have Mexico, Cancun, and um, Punta Cana. So basically, Cuba tends to be very popular out of Fredericton for the direct flight and the price point. Now, if I were to travel, when would be the best time of year to go? So if you can steer clear of any major holidays or March breaks, spring breaks, um, Christmas, of course, is huge. People think sometimes it's going to be cheaper, but it is not. Um, when, where we have our direct flights from around mid-February till the end of April, uh, April is going to be the low end of the season. So if you're looking for the best deal, probably mid to late April. Um, in the summer months where it's completely off season, yeah. it's not necessarily that much cheaper out of here because we don't have any direct flights. So okay. you're still going to have to use um, a company that's going to take you via Toronto or via Montreal. So you can find a good deal, but it's not, maybe not that great as you think it would be to go in June. Um, so April for direct flights, you can usually find a good deal. We'll be back after this short break to make some crackers and some lovely uh, dill pickle dip with Linda right after these messages. Welcome back to Easy Eats. Again, my name is Chef Eve Deshane and we're in the Greener Village's Learning Kitchen with Linda Hartley Orchard, a uh, travel agent. And uh, so Linda, you have four kids. I do. So busy, busy household. Yes. And four kids means lots of snacks. Yes. So today we're going to, I'm going to show you how to make these lovely crackers that you can adapt to any flavor that the kids like. Okay. And uh, again, I know that you're a mom that is invested on what you're putting into those kids' bodies. So you can definitely know what these are. Mm -hmm. Those snack crackers have all kinds of additives and things like that. So this is a more Simple, easy, and you can get them involved. Right. Perfect. So we'll, we'll start off right here. So all you need is three cups of all-purpose flour, whole wheat flour, if, you, if you'd like. And then to that, we're just going to add a teaspoon of, or two teaspoons of sugar, two teaspoons of salt. I'm just going to mix that together just like this, just to make everything nice and homogenous. And then I'm going to add four tablespoons of olive oil, but you can add any kind of oil you want. So okay. if you're looking for coconut oil or butter, if you want to use butter, mm -hmm. it's okay. You just have to make sure that it's melted. There we go. And then we're just going to mix that all up together until the oil pretty much disappears. And you're going to see kind of like a little bit of a pebbling 
a little bit of a sandy kind of texture, and that's kind of what you're looking for right there. Now this point right here, if you say wanted to make a cheese cracker, you can put your cheese in there, or if okay. you wanted to put like garlic or herbs or anything like that, we would do like that. But again, we're going to keep it plain for today, and then you could just kind of add up to that. Perfect. And then what we're going to do is just simply add one cup of warm water. Okay. Now the reason I'm adding warm water is because it helps develop the gluten and it makes the dough softer and easier to, to manage. If you use cold water, what happens is it seizes up and then that dough ball becomes hard to roll out okay. and it just becomes a, an issue. There we go. Let's add that to that, just like that. And then we're just going to mix it until you get a dough ball. Just. So these are going to be crackers. They're going to be crackers okay. and you can make them as thin or as thick as you want. And like I said, this is the, the great spot right here for the kids to get their hands messy and dirty. Yes. So we've got a nice uh, soft dough right here and we're just going to put a little bit of flour on top like that. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll it out. Roll it out as thin as you want them. So if you're looking for a thicker cracker, you can actually go with a thicker cracker. But if not, just roll it right out. And at this point right here, once it's rolled out, you can get your uh, cookie cutters if you want to get fancy crackers. Mm. So if you wanted to make uh, fish crackers or and make it fun for the kids, then you can definitely do it just like that. But right now, here we go. I've got, and it's really forgiving. Most doughs like this aren't as uh, user friendly. So you can just kind of pick it up and then just shape it. There you go, just like that. I'm just gonna Easy. grab a sheet pan about that size and we're just gonna set our oven at about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. And then we're just going to grab a pizza cutter and literally, if we wanted to make square crackers, I would just kind of square everything off just like this, which I'm doing. And then we can re-roll these and then just make more crackers. Right. And then all we're gonna do and we'll see how good my lines are. We're just going to simply just cut these lovely crackers. Here we go, we'll just move that this way and there. And like I said, any shape you want. And then I'm going to, uh, what's called docking, is just kind of prick them with a fork. That way they don't puff up. Okay. But if you're looking for a puffy cracker, then you don't have to do this. Now this time too, we can put more seasoning on it. So say if I wanted to put some salt or some pepper or anything on these, we can do that as well once we get them oops, into the, uh, the sheet pan. What other popular seasonings would you put on there? What are some ideas? Some ideas, well, which is great is, uh, well, you see, the, you just look at the grocery store, right? So there's like rosemary and roasted garlic. So you can put a little bit of rosemary on top. Uh, a little bit of garlic inside the dough if you oh, wanted okay, to. Yes. So you can roll your flavorings inside the dough or you can sprinkle them on top. Um, the favorite here when I make crackers is I have an ev everything bagel seasoning. Ah, I have one too, yeah. So we just kind mm -hmm. of toss that on, on, on these crackers and they turn out really, really nice. Yes. Um, cheese is, is always a popular, uh, a popular one and, um, or just plain because basically it's a vehicle to put dip into right. you. So you want to have something that's kind of neutral and that's not going to overshine the dip that, mm -hmm. that, uh, that you're going to be uh, serving. And just as simple as that, like this. And then we're going to be making one of your favorite dips today. Yes. A dill pickle dip. Now, yes. dill pickle dip, why is that your favorite? <laughs> um, well, I'm not sure when I got introduced to it, but uh, I have always loved uh, dill pickle dip. Um, and I make my own as well. And uh, it's heavily requested for me to bring my dill pickle dip to parties. So well, that's right. I, uh, this one has a few different ingredients, just adding more deliciousness. So I bet it's going to be really good. And again, dips are pretty fluid. So yes. it's whatever you like and you kind of just make it your own recipe. Yes. So these are ready right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide these in the oven. And again, 400 degrees for about 15, 20 minutes or until they're nice and brown. Okay. Um, so we're going to do that, and while we do that, what we're going to do is we're going to walk through the dip, and I'm going to get Perfect. you to right. make that dip for me. Here we go. So that in there. 
So for the dill pickle dip, it's really, really simple. It's mm -hmm. dill pickles. That's uh, right. So we'll add eight ounces of cream cheese into the bowl. All right. Just like okay. that. Yep, perfect. <laughs> um, to that, I'm going to add half a cup of sour cream. This is already measured out, right? It is already okay. measured out, absolutely. Perfect. There we go. And all we're going to do is we're going to mix that until it's nice and smooth. Okay. Pass that all up. Oh. Are there any um, trends or uh -huh. things that you've seen lately that are new to the travel agency? People are leaning uh, more towards uh, dream vacations, I guess, like uh, okay. once in a lifetime vacations. I'm getting requests for Australia. And um, so I think people, Give because of COVID, now that you can travel again, are more willing to, since they haven't traveled for a few years, are more willing to dish out the bigger money or for the for the vacation that they've always wanted to do so they're not as conscious about what's the best deal people are looking for you know i don't want to be i don't want to miss out again like they did during COVID. i want to so if, if we can travel now let's go <laughs> so everyone's trying to cure all that cabin fever that exactly they've been experiencing yes. over the last two years and it's important to say that you need to have your cream cheese at room temperature yes and uh, it's always one of those things where there, it's looking good right now. So to that, Real while you're mixing, soft. we're just going to add uh, probably about two or three tablespoons of pickle juice, mm -hmm. right from the jar of your favorite pickles. Yes. So I like using a garlic dill, but that doesn't mean that you can't use um, a relish or a bread and butter pickle or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It depends on the flavor profile you're looking for. I definitely want the, the extra garlic. That's my favorite. Well, absolutely. So there you go. So to that, I'm going to add a whole teaspoon of garlic powder, just like that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any uh, technique to maybe soften it up besides just having it at room temperature? If you're just taking it right out of the fridge. Well, you try to zap it in the microwave for 30 seconds or so. Um, mm -hmm. The only problem with that is if you leave it in too long, you kind of burn the edges of the, uh, of the right. cream cheese and it starts to... Uh, taste different so you have to really be careful your best bet is we're doing it by hand today but if you use a uh, uh, food processor it'll probably be a whole lot easier right the only problem with the food processor is that when you put in your pickles or anything like that they'll mince them up really really fine so you're not going to get those chunks yes. and things that you you kind of want and i want the chunks yes so you've traveled uh how are things different now i guess in the uh the the, the post covid area compared to before things are, are really seeing a change back to a shift back to nor normal what we the what we yeah. yeah fantastic so yeah. what we're going to do now is we're going to add a little bit of uh color so we're a little bit of green onion mm -hmm. a little bit of uh dill is that fresh dill it is fresh dill yes. yeah you can add dry dill as if you want as well but i really like the taste yes. of fresh dill and then last but not least we'll add probably about three quarter cup of uh, finely diced uh, dill pickles. Oh yeah. There we go. And then you could add other cheeses to this if you want. So if you wanted to do uh, like a cheddar cheese and dill pickle dip, again, the mm -hmm. sky's the limit. And that's what's nice about dips, is you can definitely um, cater them to the crowd that you're serving. Absolutely, yeah. Um, or just kind of uh, add your own personality to it. This is how I would make it, but is there a way to make it lactose free or maybe less sodium? If you're looking for lactose free or if you're looking at uh, any kind of uh, dietary needs, so find a vegan cheese, find a vegan sour cream. And a lot of those vegan cheeses and vegan sour creams are also lactose free yes. because they're vegan. So then you can kind of uh, two birds with one stone. Um, and then a little bit of nutritional yeast is always nice in here. And that's going to give you that pop of cheese that you're missing in a lot of the uh, vegan dishes that, right. uh, that are being offered. Now that the dip is done, we'll be back after this short break to uh, see how it tastes with the crackers. Welcome back to Easy Eats. Now that our crackers are out of the oven, uh, we're just going to uh, try them out. So they're a little hot right now because they <laughs> just came out of the oven, which is great because this nice dip will cool them off. Mm -hmm. But as you can see, they're nice and crisp. They're a little thick, so they've got a little bit of chew, but again, like I said, you can make them as thin or as thick as you want. Right, yeah. 
So, um, all in all, I mean, you kind of take the stress out of traveling for a lot of people. Yes, I like to think so. And I do have a lot of um, clientele that I've had for years, and sometimes they know exactly what they want. They just email me, Linda, we want to go here on this date, book it. You, you have our credit card, book it. And so that's great that they still feel the need to have me involved, yeah. even though they, they've been, they know what they want to do. Yeah. Um, there's no additional fee. Um, and I'm there for them should there be any new information, changes. Um, one tour operator just recently took away a free carry-on bag. Okay. So some people didn't know that. So that's something that's in all my emails. You know, any departure fees that aren't included, that's going to be in my email. What you need to fill out before you go, that's going to be there. So if you could just go online, book yourself, you might not get all that information. And you might show up at the airport with the incorrect information. Okay. So you've traveled a lot, Linda. Is there any kind of tips that you can offer people? Or is there anything that people kind of forget or don't think is important that you, we should uh, mention? Uh, yes, absolutely. I, I would think the most important thing that a lot of people deem unnecessary or they think they're not going to use um, is travel insurance. Okay. Um, a lot of the tour operators now offer their own uh, type of insurance um, or waiver for cancellation. But another big part would be your interruption and out-of-country medical. Um, it's relatively inexpensive um, in the grand scheme of, of your vacation, uh, and I highly recommend it. I, I don't personally travel without it um, because anything can happen. That's right, yeah. And I, I get this a lot that people will say, it doesn't matter, we're going no matter what. We're going no matter what. And if that person has children, I will say, do you have kids? And yes. If something happens to your kid, are you going? And then it's usually, well, well, no, I wouldn't go. Well, then there you go. And I know the last thing you're going to think about is the expense of that trip. However, when things are hard and there's something that's come up, it is nice to know, okay, submit a claim with my travel agent, forget about it for now, get that money back. Um, so that's very important. An in-destination, an interruption claim can often be up to three times the cost of your trip. So wow. if you need to come home for an emergency, um, yeah, it can cost that much to get a, a one-way ticket home out of a, out of whatever destination you're in. And uh, baggage, like that's included in the interruption as well, lost, damaged baggage. Um, last year when I was in Jamaica, my girlfriend and I actually got turned around and back to Toronto. For, uh, there was a strike at the airport in Jamaica. We had insurance, so we opened a claim, paid for our hotel in Toronto that night, um, food, taxis that we took. It wasn't a huge claim, but it was nice to know we could submit all that and get all that money back. So, so it's that's one of the biggest tips biggest is just thing making is sure. Yeah. Make sure you're covered. And if you have coverage on your credit card, make sure you check into it, um, what they cover, what the guidelines are. And if you have your own medical insurance, it's a good idea to reach out and see if they pay up front because a lot of times they do not. And a medical claim, you know, in the States yeah. could costs more than your whole mortgage. No, no, <laughs> so, you're right. yeah, yeah. so if you don't have the kind of money to dish out on an emergency, it's nice to have a, an insurance. Thank you so much for being on the show today, Linda. You've given us all kinds of neat ideas and stuff and, uh, and destinations that we can possibly travel. Right. And uh, again, you're a busy mom with lots of kids. You're getting lunch ready. You're trying to make sure that you can work while all of that buzzing is going around. Yes. So these crackers here are great mm -hmm. for that. And uh, there we go. So let's try this lovely dip All right. and crackers. And again, thank you so much for being on. Thanks for having me. Okay. All right. Mmm. Mmm. I work well. Yeah, the dip is amazing. Thank you. Mm-hmm.